Hello Gems, this is Sapphire and we will be doing another tutorial for Streamlabs OBS, an in-depth advanced tutorial so that you can understand how this program works and how you can set it up to stream the way you'd like to stream. Let's get started! So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to streamlabs.com. I will drop a link for this in the description. Go ahead and click download Streamlabs free for Windows. So the most important bar here on the left has these different functions you can do. We will be talking about all of them, but we are going to be starting right here with the editor. So go ahead and click on this camera. This is going to be probably our most important tab. We're going to be able to edit everything that people see on either your stream or your recording. So the way I would like to break this down is via a house analogy. So you have houses with a room inside the house with things inside that room. So you're going to have your house, which is going to be this drop down hero arrow. You're going to have right here, which is going to be your rooms. And over here will be the things inside that room. So first we want to start from our biggest branch out, which is going to be your house. So go ahead and click this drop down arrow here. We're going to click manage all and imagine if these were a bunch of different houses. Say you owned a few different houses like a shack, a mansion, a normal house. So these these act as all of your houses. So you can go over here and import from OBS if you use that. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Or you can create a new house. So I'm creating a new house. This new house is going to be called the tutorial tutorial house. And I'm going to rename it. Um, whoops. Tutorial House. Click enter. And now it is named Tutorial House. So then I'm going to click done. And now I'm in a brand new fresh tutorial house. So next we have what's within the tutorial house. So I'm going to create a few different scenes. These are called your scenes. And these are a bunch of different rooms you could visit if you're in the house. So think about going to a kitchen. In the kitchen you would find supplies you need while you're in the kitchen. When you go to your bedroom you'd find things you need to be in your bedroom like a bed or a lamp or a bookshelf. And if you wanted like a living room you would find usually maybe a couch or a TV there. So again think about it like that. So we are going to, we have three different functions here. We have a plus, we have a minus, and we have settings, which are scene transitions. So the plus is simply going to add a room, a minus is going to take away a room, and the scene transitions we'll get into a little bit later. So go ahead and click that plus sign, go ahead and name your first room. I'm going to call this first room the kitchen. I'm just going to add a few, for example, we're going to add the kitchen. We're going to add bedroom one, living room. And obviously they don't need to be called these exact things. Uh, and let me show you an example. So if I want to take away this scene, I'll just click minus and then that's gone. So now we have these three here. So for example, if you do something like switch between just chatting, real life where you want your screen to be all big or and a video game. So say you switch between those two things, then you might want two different rooms for that. Like one will be your just chatting room and one will be your I'm playing Horizon Zero Dawn room or something like that. So think about it in that context when you are building the scenes inside your house. So again, these are all the things we have. And next we're going to move on to sources. Next are our sources. So this is going to be the contents that live within inside a room. So for example, we'll start with the kitchen over here. I'll go over all these things, but the most important thing right now is your plus and your minus, just like over here. So we're going to go ahead and add a source, and I'm going to talk you through all these different ones. So first off, we've got image. Image is if you want to add any type of image. Up here it shows you all the image types that are supported. So let's go ahead and add something for fun. So you can also add GIFs in here. So if you want a GIF or something that's moving, you can add that in there. So look, now I, I can resize it. I got it here, my little disco ball. Great, we got a disco ball in the kitchen. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Next we've got a browser source. So browser source is a web-based content source like web pages or anything like that. So for example, you can do browser source. I've never used this one before. You can use it if you want. So you're going to go ahead and drop a link in here. I'm just going to put my YouTube link. So let's go ahead and click done. And again, you can choose how big it is, but you can still edit that with your mouse as well. So that's going to go ahead and load in my YouTube. Again, I don't really know exactly why. <laughs> I don't know exactly what this is used for. If you figured out too, that's great. Let me know in the comments. Uh, but it's there if you need it. So that's a browser source. And you got different icons that will tell you what these things are. 
Let's go ahead and add another one. We've got an image slideshow. So this rotates through. This gives you a lot more settings in here to be able to rotate through the slideshow. So for example, if you are an art streamer streaming creative and you want a slideshow of your art to be showing on screen, this is a great place to do that. So visibility behavior, it can always play when not visible, stop when it's not visible, or restart when visible, or pause when not visible, unpause when visible. You can play at those different settings. Slide mode, do you want to be able to control the slideshow yourself or do you want it to flip through automatically? Transition is just going to make it look smoother. You can test any of these guys out. And we've got time between slides. Again, you can test that out depending on how fast or slow you want the slideshow to go. There's time between slides. And then there is how fast it transitions. So you, again, you can play those two. And again, do you want it to loop? Probably, if you're on stream. Do you want it to hide when the slideshow is done? You can do that. I'm not sure why. If you if you only want it to show it once and maybe randomize playback. So maybe you don't want it to play the same thing over and over. Maybe you want it to choose from a collection of images. So here, you can select a ratio or the bounding size if you want. Again, you can control this manually, so not super important. And then image files. So this is where you're going to be able to add your files. So say I want angry Saya, angry to happy Saya, <laughs> another happy Saya. Let's see now. Got our little slideshow over there. Now it's transitioning. So we got a slideshow. It's great. Mine has like a little bit of a long time in between, which is okay. You can you can change it if you want, but really cool feature. So yeah, you can do image slideshow. Next, we've got display capture. So this is, if you have multiple monitors, this is a useful one. So display capture, I usually call it something like monitor one, two, or three, depending on how many you have. And then you'll be able to select between your monitors. So here is display one, that's my main monitor. Display two, that's where I'm recording right now. And display three, that's my tablet. So which one do you want? And again, you can name it accordingly. So it can be nice and fancy. And these act like layers. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with layers, anything that's on top will show first. Anything below it will be hidden if this is too big. So you can see the other things are there, but this is on top, so it's over-encompassing. If you want these things to lay on top, you're going to have to drag your monitor underneath everything. So next we're going to be doing game capture. So go ahead and click that, add source, add source. So you got different modes here. You could do capture any full screen application. This is going to detect automatically if you have a game open in full screen mode. So that could be good if you just want this to be your main gaming room and you just want it to capture whatever full game you're playing. You might want to go with that. But I like specific window because it allows me more control. So I'm going to go with that one. This one I haven't used before, so not 100% sure. Specific window. Then you get to choose which window you want to capture. So in this case, I'm going to select streaming avatars to show you that's just an application I have on Steam. So great. So for something like this, uh, this is meant to have a transparent background. You, This is when you may want to click the transparency box. So see how it gets rid of this uh, background and I only have the stream avatars now. But yeah, so that's that's a case in which you would want transparency. That's, that's the main thing that you probably want to worry about in here. Next is audio input capture. If you wanted to add additional audio for some reason, you can use this. And so you can choose it from any of your different microphones. You'd go add source, same dealio. You can go ahead and select any of these different mics here that you might have. Open VR capture. If you are doing something like streaming VR chat or anything on VR Beat Saber, you might want to use open VR capture. I think it can lead to better performance. So that is an option there for you as well. Next is color source. Again, this one, not super important. If you have an image you want to put in the back, which will probably look better anyways, color source is still an option. So if you want a certain color behind everything, you can go ahead and use this for that. And there you go. So again, this is a color block I have. We can put that behind things if we want. But again, not super useful if you're just going to end up putting an image back there. I don't really see the point in it, but it's there again if you need it. I honestly feel like most of the time I'm just dissing like half of the things in a program and it's so sad. So next is media source. This one's actually really interesting, really cool. So this supports GIFs. Uh, this supports media files. This supports every type of thing you can probably think of that might not be an image. So you can go ahead and add that. So for example, if I wanted to add a video, I could do that. So let's go ahead and try that. Here's, this is going to be trippy, but here's one of my videos or the, from the beginning of this video, a clip. So see how this video is just playing back here? So yeah, you can do this and that would be... 
that could be something if you need the video to play again to maybe maybe have a looping video or like a looping animation or something like that that's that could be a good use for that next we'll be going over text gdi this is for adding any sort of text you'd like on your screen so font families, any font that you have downloaded from the internet should automatically be read by Streamlabs. So if you have one that you got somewhere and it's on your computer already, you should be able to use it and select it from this list. For example, I use Silver Age Queens for a lot of my stuff. Uh, font size or font style, that's the only one I have. All these are different uh, aesthetics and choices you can make to customize your font. Again, I'll let you guys play with that. I'm not going to go into every bit and piece and detail again unless you'd like a separate tutorial for that sure but let's just test it out hey what's going on <laughs> click ok and our text file looks like is up here you can make it bigger here but i think that if you make it bigger there it's going to end up pixelating so the way you can solve that problem is by going into your settings and changing the size of the font yep so now it's a lot cleaner compared to as if the font size was lower. I'll show you. See? Look at that. And that's going to be your res. And then if you make that scale it up, it's not going to look right. So make sure you're making your text bigger through the font size itself. Yay! Hey, what's going on? So another really cool thing too is you can actually check box this use Google font and get all of Google's fonts here. And they have literally a plethora of things to choose from, of different fonts to look at. So, and I would highly recommend this because most of Google's fonts are pretty good. None of them are really janky. Next, we will be doing window capture. Add source, add source. And basically, here is the same type of thing as display capture. It's just a little bit more focused, and sometimes this works better than display capture, and vice versa. So, if I wanted to window capture, let's say Photoshop, which I have up right now. You can click OK. So now this is going to window capture Photoshop. Photoshop is currently on my tablet back there, but it's only going to capture what's going on in Photoshop itself. So I'll show an example. Say I go into my cube file here. Now see how it's only being affected by the Photoshop? So that's pretty good because if you don't want it to be reading everything that's going on on your monitor and you just want it to focus on that specific window, this could be a really good option for that. So that's when you would want to use window capture. Next we have video capture device. This is going to be used for things like a webcam. So if you have a webcam, you can go in and add that. So for me, uh, I could use my Vive, I could use my webcam. Right now it's not going to show up because if you're using your VTuber, it can't use your camera for both VTubing and for capturing my face at the same time. So this example is not going to work 100% right now. These are other options. Again, you have different ways to customize as well. And if your camera is ever giving you problems, go ahead and click deactivate and then click activate again and that can like refresh it. I found that to be really helpful. Same for configure video, but again, all these other things are just different settings you can mess with within your webcam. But again, the some of the basic stuff here is just needing to get that webcam going just like that. Next we have audio output capture. So this is if you want your audio to be sourcing out to another source. Maybe you had two headphones plugged into your PC for some reason. I, again, I, I don't know. Those of you that will end up setting up something crazy, you might find use for the audio input and audio output, but again, I don't. And again, for something like ASMR, maybe that's why you would use more audio focused stuff, but currently I do not use them. And then lastly, this one's kind of crazy. You got seen. <laughs> This one is actually insane. It's like a paradox. So you can add one of your scenes over here within. So like adding a room within your room. So think about like putting a picture of your other room in the kitchen. Like say I put a picture of my bedroom in the kitchen, but that bedroom reacts as a live picture. So you can open that and I can have everything from my bedroom scene in my kitchen. And for these, you could lock something so you can't do anything uh, you can't change it, so if I wanted to like go into any of the settings, I couldn't change it. And you have an eyeball here, which is your classic uh, hiding and showing something. So, so hey, what's going on? We can do take away our image slideshow, turn it on. So that's just acts as showing and hiding. So we have now covered all of our types of sources and when you can use them. I will do a I will do widgets in one of the next parts because this is a whole other thing too that's going to take quite some time to go over. But so now you know all your standard sources and what all those things could be used for. 
Again, you can plus or minus. You can take stuff away. You can add stuff. Same thing as we talked about earlier over here. And the next thing to know is whenever you have a certain source selected, you can click, you can open the source properties like this, which just goes into the extra settings of whatever that specific thing is. You can also right click and go to properties. You can get into that window, this window, either by clicking directly on that or going to properties through right clicking. So we've got next, we've got toggle selective recording. So this is a pretty cool thing. If you want to stream with having all these different overlays, but you don't want these overlays to be shown, if you're also going to record to put it on YouTube later, you can click toggle selected recording. So once you toggle that, you have this on everything, on every single uh, source that you have got. So basically, if I don't want my follower goal or follower goal, my alert box coming up, during my recording because I'm going to want to put like a speed paint on YouTube later, I can go ahead and toggle uh, only visible on stream. So now it's only visible on stream and not when I am recording if you wanted to do both at the same time. So again, that's pretty cool. Um, or have it only visible while recording or uh, visible on both stream and recording. So you have uh, three different things to toggle through. Next, we've got groups. So groups are another cool thing. Again, if you understand what layers are, how these can be dragged above and below to be able to affect their position up here. You can also group things. So say I want these th three things grouped. I can select all three, so I just click the top one, hold down shift, go to the one I want. So you go ahead and you click on one and you can hold down shift and select multiple and then add a group. So then you can add a group, call the group something. I'm gonna call it something. <laughs> And now I have a group called something and you can drop down to see it. You can disable the whole group at once if you needed to for some reason. So yeah, that's how folders work or groups. So that should cover pretty much everything for, for how sources works. And hopefully this will help you out and help you get started with understanding a little bit about how streaming runs. In the next part, I will get into the mixer and the widgets. That will probably be the focus next, and depending on the time, I may start showing around some other things, but hopefully this can at least get you started. The other stuff I will be going over in the next part, but I don't want to make this a 300 billion long year video, so hopefully that can get you started, and yeah! I hope that was helpful. Let me know what you think down below. You can drop any questions or comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It will help others find it and hopefully be able to pursue their dream of streaming as well. My name is Sapphire, and if you'd like to find me live, you can find me over at twitch.tv slash sapphire, S-Y-A-F-I-R-E. You can always ask me questions there. You can add me on Discord. We have a great community. But thank you so much again for watching. Remember that you are awesome, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful evening. Goodbye!